matters. Anyone uh, in whose house there was found leaven uh, uh, would, would immediately would immediately be be be, be uh, ostracized from being uh, uh, a member of uh, of the committee of Israel. Why? Because God demands that there shall be no living. In which case, it means uh, the, 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 that the body of Christ that was sacrificed was sacrificed without living. It was without sin. It was without blemish. It was without wrinkle. Hallelujah. So it means that after we've gotten born again, the spirit of Christ that came into us, that spirit of uh, life that is in Christ Jesus that came into us is without leaven. So in our spirit man, as we know that we are tripartite being, we are essentially spirits having a soul living in a body. Hallelujah. Uh, in John chapter 3, verse number 6, uh, uh, Jesus talking with Nicodemus, he says that he that is born of the spirit is spirit. So we are spirit beings. We are not human beings any longer after we have received Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. So that spirit man that came into us, that spirit that came into us at new birth, that came alive when, when, when we got born again, that spirit has no iota of sin in it. It has no leaven in it. Hallelujah. Uh, and that typifies even the body of Christ that was buried sinless. He was able to resurrect on the third day because he was sinless. So as a believer, after you have received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are sinless in your spirit man. But what happens is that within your soul is still, the re is still resident there, uh, uh, max of humanity, humanity as it were, that is still encased there, is still resident there, that by, by, by going through the word of God, according to uh, the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse number two, where it says that we should not be conformed to this world, but be thou transformed by renewing your mind. So we begin to renew our mind by the word of God so that you may be able to prove that which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And this proving is the one that you do by yourself as you begin to allow the word of God into your heart to bring transformation in the, so that humanity will give way to the life of Christ, so that righteousness will take over where there was, used to be unrighteousness. Because in your soul, there are still uh, Adamic tendencies, Adamic tendencies as it were within your soul. So these are the processes by which that same Passover was being is being fulfilled in us. Now, I said yesterday um, a very profound statement that I made, uh, which was acknowledged by uh, Pastor Dele Matthews yesterday, that when Jesus resurrected, Mary Magdalene came to embrace him, having seen the resurrected Lord. He said, no, do not touch me, for I have not presented myself to my father and your father. Go and tell my disciples that they should meet with me in Jerusalem. So Jesus right there was saying, I have not offered myself to the, to, to the father as first fruits. I have not offered myself to the father as first fruits. Because on that third day is the day when the first ripened valley is being presented to the high priest, and the high priest will wave it before the Lord as the first ripened fruit of valley, hallelujah, that will be presented to God, that is being offered or sacrificed to God. Um, if you read a book by um, uh, uh, Dr. Stephen Jones, uh, the, the Valley Overcomers, you will come into a deeper understanding of this. So when Jesus died, Jesus must first of all fulfill that sin. He must present himself as the first fruit unto God, first begotten from the dead. For we are also going to be fruit that will be presented to God. Because the scripture says that the, 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 the husband man waited earnestly for the precious fruit of the earth. We are supposed to be the, the next in line that will mature and be harvested unto God and presented unto God as fruits. Hallelujah. So that's why... That's why, uh, um, uh, that's how the, the, the feast, the first feast of the Lord, uh, major feast was uh, uh, fulfilled in us and through us by Christ. And we are following in that order. Hallelujah. Then it says in uh, uh, the book of uh, Exodus chapter 23 and also uh, the book of um, Leviticus 23, that on, you, you count seven Sabbaths, seven Sabbaths from the day you celebrate the, 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 the Passover. Uh, that's why it's called, uh, like Pastor said yesterday, it's the Feast of Shabbat, meaning the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Weeks. So when you say in the scripture, it are the Feast of Pentecost or Feast of Weeks, it's talking about the Feast of Pentecost. It's just the same, the same feast, 
but using different names according to the tradition of the Jews. Hallelujah. So, and, and it says, on the day after, on the day after will be that celebration. Hallelujah. Which is the future day. Uh, because uh, Pentecost talks about faith. Hallelujah. So, you see that, uh, like he said yesterday, that was fulfilled, that feast was fulfilled uh, uh, at the upper room. Uh, if you read Acts of Apostles, let's look at Acts of Apostles chapter 1. Let's look at Acts of Apostles chapter 1 so that it gives us an understanding. Acts chapter 1. And I will read from verse 1. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he had, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So after Jesus resurrected, he had to be with the apostles, teaching them the things of the kingdom of God for forty days. Hallelujah. And verse five, uh, verse four, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. We say to you, you have heard of me. And Jesus here was talking about all the uh, um, teachings he gave the disciples in, in, in the book of John, chapter 14, 15, and 16, where he was telling them that it's most important that he left, or if he left not, the Holy Ghost will not come, or the comforter, another comforter. That comforter, that word, that word, another uh, means another paracletos, it means that of the same spirit, of the same quality uh, of the same personality that will come to join you so as to bring all to your understanding all that I have taught you. And the difference between then and now is that after the Holy Ghost is given, now the Holy Ghost is everywhere among all the believers. He's walking with them. Jesus in chapter 14 of the book of John says that he is with you but shall be in you. So that experience of being in us was after uh, uh, the church was born, that, that was in the day of Pentecost. And of course, after you've gotten born again, that spirit became in you, but you were not yet aware of it until you were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Then that awareness of the indwelling of the spirit came forth. So you, 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 you began to see that. So let's continue. And verse five, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. If you read in the book of Matthew, I think chapter 3, Jesus was saying, uh, John the Baptist was saying that he that is coming after me, it, it is he uh, whose standards I am not worthy to enlarge. He is the one who will baptize you with Holy Ghost and with fire, uh, that his widowing fan is, is in his hands, with which he will thoroughly wash the floor. He said he, the wheat he will gather into his fan and the the, 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 his, uh, the, the shaft he will throw into unquenchable fire. So there it was talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit that is Jesus who will baptize us in that. So Jesus here, uh, uh, Jesus here is re echoing that in verse 5. For he said that John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. So on the 40th day he was saying this. So that presupposes that it, it came to, uh, to, to, to fruition on the 50th day, which was 10 days from that day. 10 days from that day that Jesus was, you know, talking with them, you know, about this. Hallelujah. Before he ascended. So, verse 6. When therefore, when, the, when they therefore come together, they ask of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? They, did, they were still seen, even at this time, Jesus as a conquering Messiah, as a conquering Messiah, but not a spiritual Messiah who will save them from sin, from death, and from the wrath of God. They were still looking for who will come to save them from the bondage to rule. Hallelujah. So they asked this question, and he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times of the season which the Father had put in his own power, but you shall receive, the, receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, unto all and unto all the uttermost part of the earth. So this experience was to 
come, Jesus here was foretelling them that which will happen, which will be the fulfillment or the coming forth of the feast of Pentecost uh, being restored to the body of Christ at then. And this was to happen in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the book of uh, Acts chapter number two. I will read, I will read. Hallelujah. I'll read from verse one. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, so the, 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 the day of Pentecost was to come 10 days after this, their encounter with Jesus Christ, because Jesus after resurrection was with them for 40 days. Hallelujah. So uh, he came fully after 10 days, on the 10 day after uh, uh, ascension, uh, verse two. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So this feast that was being fulfilled that day happened while other Jews were in Jerusalem to celebrate their normal feast of Pentecost. Hallelujah. But here, at the upper room, something different is happening. Something different is being restored to the body. Something different, the body of Christ was to emerge. The church of the our Lord Jesus Christ was to emerge. Hallelujah. So, uh, uh, and, and the, 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 this was to manifest. The consequence of that day was the speaking in tongues after the clothing tongues of fire was settled upon them, each, every one of them at the upper room. Hallelujah. And see, they began to jest when they began to speak that these were men who were drunk, hallelujah. But see, from verse 14, uh, from verse 13, uh, 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 others mocking say, these men are full of new wine, hallelujah. Remember that the theme of this meeting is uh, uh, wine and oil, hallelujah. So we want to understand how that wine came to be in the third feast. We'll come there. But verse 14, but Peter standing up with the eleven, lifted out his voice and said unto them, you men of Judea and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is the, for the third hour of the day, the third hour of the day. For this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. If you go to the book of Joel, you see it there. And it shall come to pass in the last day, said the Lord, I will now pour my spirit upon all flesh and your sons so that, that was all of them. If you read further down to verse 21, you will notice that all of these experiences came on that 50th day after the celebration of the Feast of Passover. Hallelujah. So that became the restoration of the Feast of Pentecost. And that, that was the day that the church of our Lord Jesus Christ was born. So the church of our Lord Jesus Christ came into being by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost, it brought the boldness. So that when one is baptized in the Holy Ghost, what it means is that the boldness to be witnesses, being witnesses does not just mean I want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, ponder, uh, you know, waste a little time here. You see, the, the being a witness does not just mean to go and preach that Jesus Christ saves. Hallelujah! It doesn't just mean that. It means one who is willing to die and is in the process of dying because of the message that he's carrying. He knows he will die, that this message will eventually deal with the humanity inside of him, that humanity will eventually give way completely for this life of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is what a witness means. Hallelujah. So that when after you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, you, you are now empowered to be a witness. That is when the power to actually begin the process of giving your life over to Jesus starts. Hallelujah. You know, oftentimes when we want to talk about our new birth experience, we'll normally say when we give our lives to Christ, when we mm -hmm. give our lives to Christ. That is mm -hmm. not the proper thing. It is where it was, the experience was when you received the life of Christ inside of you. Mm -hmm. Because your life was still, is still resident within your soul that you are here to give as you begin to journey with, the, with, with, with Christ through his word by the power of the Holy Spirit that makes you to be a Messiah, 
a Messiah, one who is willing and is seen to be dying. Hallelujah. So that, that, that's the experience. Hallelujah. So the, uh, uh, if you remember, I, I said something yesterday in Jeremiah 31, verse 31, uh, God was talking. He says that in that day, he will make a new covenant with his people, not as the covenant he made with them in the wilderness and they disobeyed him and they all died. He said that the covenant I will make with them in that day will be that I will give them a new spirit and I will put my laws in their heart and I will write it in their hearts so that no man will say, no, the law. Hallelujah. So the, what he's actually talking about is the experience of the Pentecost. That after when the celebration, when the celebration or the fulfillment of that Pentecost takes place in the life of a believer, that is when the word begins to be written in the heart by the Holy Spirit. And that is when the, uh, the, the believer begins to, you know, as it were, value the word of God and value his relationship with Christ more than before, more than ever before. Because at that point, there is something that is happening. I want to borrow a leap here to use the covenant that God made with um, with um, uh, um, uh, one of our fathers, uh, Patriarch uh, uh, Noah. Uh, Noah was a righteous man in his generation. And because of his righteousness in that generation, God caught after the flood, God caught a covenant that is called the covenant of rainbow with him. And that rainbow uh, covenant means that, you know, it's a, it's a journey into perfection. And the colors of the rainbow is actually a journey into perfection. I want to use it to paint a picture of this uh, uh, life that is in the heart that is coming forth as a result of the uh, fulfillment of the, the feast of Pentecost inside the life of a believer. Uh, the first color in the color of rainbow is the color is the color red, and red actually talks about what it talks about the coming in contact with the with God through the shed blood of Jesus, our blood covenant. It talks about the blood covenant, and after that, the next color there is the color orange. The color orange talks about the the the, 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 the it, it talks about faith. It talks about faith. For uh, without faith, it is impossible to please Him. And you notice that after your born again experience. The first thing that began to rise up within you is not even your sense of identity. It's not even the sense of the fact that you're a child of God. The next thing was faith. You could use your faith to achieve anything. Hallelujah. Even though uh, 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 at that time we were yet in ignorance. But God permits that. He allows that. And after that, it comes the next color, which is color yellow. Color yellow talks about our coming forth into the understandings of the Holy Spirit, his baptisms, his word being written in our hearts. Hallelujah. And the, the placement and location of the word of God inside of, inside of our heart is now leaving the flesh and is penetrating and coming into our heart. After that, the next color that is important is the color green. And what does green symbolize? It talks about the coming forth of the life of Christ that is being held captive by the canals of humanity within our soul. So it's now coming forth right now because of the advent of the, or the workings of the spirit, the workings of the spirit of God, which is symbolized by the color yellow, hallelujah. And you know, if you plant a grain uh, or, or a seed of corn anywhere or bean, it will germinate inside the house. But once the, 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 the tender, it begins to come forth, what you will see one characteristic that will take place. What will take place is that you will see the, the plant bending towards where there's light, where there's light, so that it will be able to receive light for photosynthesis. Hallelujah. So once this light begins to sprout within you, what happens is that you begin to look for light that will sustain the light within that is beginning to find expressions. And that is what happens to believers at times. You see them leaving their fellowship that they used to be in to look for another fellowship. It's not because they are harlots or they are prostituting about um, fellowship. No, it's because there, there is something that is happening inside of them that they have not come to be able to, you know, you know, comprehend or give expressions to. So they'll start looking for light. Wherever they see that light, they settle for that light. Hallelujah. They settle and begin to receive that light, the light of the gospel of Christ. Jesus himself saying, I am the light of the world. So they begin to receive that light. Hallelujah. So these are all processes that are contained within the, the fulfillment of the Feast of Pentecost in the life of a believer. It is very key. It is very key. Why is this so? 
Because if this is not fulfilled inside the life of a believer, what will happen is that that person will largely be a carnal Christian. It will be a Christian. He will be a believer. Hallelujah. He could even be tongue talking, but because he has not pressed further into Christ through the world, hallelujah, it will be a carnal Christian. Hallelujah. And as a result, the expressions of the life of Christ within cannot come forth. Cannot come forth. And such will not be able to mature to become a son. Hallelujah. A huge son. One who has come of age that the father can entrust you know, certain uh, operations of the kingdom into his hands. Right? So when Paul was saying that we have the mind of Christ, it doesn't mean each and every one of us potentially has the mind of Christ. But in actual functionality, not many of us have been able to grow into where we function in the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. It is a function of maturity. It is a function of fulfillment of the Feast of Pentecost inside of the life of a believer. Hallelujah. Pastor, I hope you are still with us. Very much, sir. I'm here. Okay, sir. Me, so, yes. um, the, 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 you want to say something, sir? No, you are, yes. Um, please continue. Uh, well, if I will say something, I'd just like to tell the people that we have been talking about the, the feast of the Lord. This feast were the feast of Israel that God told them to celebrate. And that this feast have things to do in our, um, they are very important in our, uh, in our work with God. Not just important, they are the ones that uh, guard and tell us where we are relating to God. And they are the ones that will indicate to us where the body of Christ is relating to the fullness of Christ and the end of this age. Continue, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. That's very profound. Because yes. actually, the, the feasts of the Lord are timelines that yes. like signposts that yes. lead us, directing us, showing us at every stage where we are with the Lord, where we are with him. It's just like the understanding of the of the uh, tabernacle patterns. Hallelujah. Yes. It's just redemptive processes. Redemptive processes until we become the fullness of Christ. When we have, when the high priest would have taken us to into uh, to meet with the Lord, with the mighty God, with the Father, where we will receive that immortal life in the flesh. Hallelujah. So there are timelines, there are redemptive patterns. Hallelujah. So uh, it, it shows you at every point where you are located in the spirit. Where you are located in the spirit. So, and uh, you, the, the most important thing is that it, 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 there are certain things that could be happening into, you know, inside of you, but you may not have the words to explain that. But mm -hmm. having this understanding, you will now be able to know what is happening to you, where you are at, in the process leading to Christhood, Christhood, mm -hmm. the fullness of Christ in the flesh, in a functional manner, not in quoting scriptures. Not in not in uh, eloquence, but in actuality, living the life, living the life of Christ. Hallelujah! These are the things that tell us that it doesn't just come. It doesn't. It comes because there is a desire in you to join me, to join me, and press into Christ, press into Christ by the Spirit. Because what, like what Pastor said yesterday, what you do not, uh, uh, any grace you do not in Christ covet. What you do not covet in Christ, you will not attain. Hallelujah. So it's very key for us to pen this picture very well so as to wet up your appetite. Wet up your appetite so that you can journey further. Journey further. Press. Because Jesus says something to his disciples. He said that he does set his hands on the plow and look back. It's not what you have made. It's not what you have made. So we must know that in this journey, we must not look back to humanity. We must not see ourselves as humanity again. Hallelujah. In John chapter 1, verse 12, Jesus said something. He said that to as many as received him, he gave the ability or the authority that they will become the sons of God. They mm. are not. They are potentially sons of God when they receive him. Mm. But they were yet to become fully functional sons of God in the mm. future. In the future. He said, they, not they that are born by the will of man. Or the wheel mm. of flesh, or the uh, the, or the blood, Hallelujah! But they are born of God. One of the things that we must know 
and divorce our minds from you know the, the, the words we used to use before is that you are not a human being. You are not a human being. You are a spirit being because you are born by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. You are born of the spirit of God. And where, if you are born of the spirit of God, life can only give birth to life. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. God, if God is God, so if God will give birth, what will he give birth to? Will he give birth to a human? No. He will give birth to God. Hallelujah. He will give birth to God. That's why in Psalm 82, he said they know not. Neither do they understand. And because of that, the foundations of the world is out of place. But I said you are Elohim. Why? Because you are the sons of Elohim. You are the sons of Elohim. But, said, but because you don't know, you shall die like men. You shall die like men. What happens to men will happen to you. These are the things we must refuse and reject vehemently in our day. What happens to men will not happen to us because we are not men. We are from Zion. We are from Zion. God used my parents to bring me forth into this world. Yes, in terms of genealogy of the world, yes, I was born of a woman. A man gave a seed that gave birth to me and then nurtured me to a certain degree before I met with Christ. Hallelujah. I am born of Zion. I am born of Zion. That is where we are coming from. And that is where our focus should be. Hallelujah. That is where our focus should be. Today, I do not want to uh, step into the top feast so much. Hallelujah. Uh, so that tomorrow we'll have something to share well. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor. Thank you very much. God bless you so much, sir. Appreciate you so much. And that the spirit is one. Hallelujah. Together. Thank you, Thank you sir. Yeah. I don't know if, the, if, the, if the, the, uh, as you go on, if there are people that have some questions. Okay, so yeah, I will give room for that by his grace. Yeah, thank you very much for um, uh, ministering to us in those um, very sound, profound, um, clear words. Yeah, I'll add this for the benefit of those who really don't know what we're talking about now, who don't know about the Feast of the Lord. You will have heard about the Feast of the Lord, Passover. Like, for example, Jesus died at Passover. So Jesus will be Passover by dying. And we fulfill Passover also by accepting Jesus Christ. Not by not by power, not by the work that we have done, not by our holiness, but just because we have said we, we believe in our heart, and we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, God has risen from the dead, we are saved. And then we come to Pentecost. You know, those are the we talked about seven major feasts yesterday, and we have also mentioned part of it today. Now, let me mention it again, uh, according to what Pastor has said, which I also said yesterday. There, was a, there were three feasts in the first month Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits. There are, uh, well, there's one feast in the third month, the Feast of Pentecost, like Pastor has said, the Feast of Shavuot or the Feast of Weeks. And there are, all, there are also three more feasts in the, in the seventh month, which are the blowing of the trumpets, the great day of atonement, and the Feast yes. of Tabernacle. Yes. I expressed and explained all of that. Yes. Now, there are divine timelines, like Pastor have said, telling us where we are at, not just individually, but the corporate body of Christ. This is, if we look at the body of Christ and whatever we see vis-a-vis -vis what this feast means, it shows us where the body of Christ is. So um, we can know. And then it also tells us the full counsel of God. Like there, I mean, some some five years ago, there were people who went around and kept saying, "Oh, it doesn't matter what we do, um, if we have accepted Christ, then we can do anything. Sin is dead, you know, and all of that. We can, and they don't mean sin is dead because you have overcome. They mean sin is dead that you can do anything. It's no longer branded as sin. In other words, if I slap you, it's no longer a sin, you know. Uh, if I if I shoot you to death, it's no longer a sin because sin is dead. Now, if you understand the timelines of God, which the believer, the body of Christ generally must go through, you will understand that, like Pastor said, we have done Passover true. Passover is come as you are, and then we are okay with that. You know, and we have come as we are. But that in Pentecost, it is that it is in that place that we now begin to give our lives to Christ. You understand? You know, when you get somebody get born, they say, Oh, service, we have given our life to Christ. But I used to wonder well, which life did you give to Christ? What, what would I do with your life, with our life, with my, what would I do with that life? That life was rotten, smelling, 
and all that, all the negatives that it could ever be. But we begin to give that life to Christ when our wills begin to change because we love Him, because we have we have seen what He wants, and it takes time. It takes time, you know. Though all of that is fulfilled in Pentecost, you know. And then when we get to tap, I mean, Tabernacles, the feast of the seventh month, we will now understand that okay, there is another level of fulfillment. Now, I like to say this to us. The, 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 side, the church age generally, the church age generally, we experience Passover, we experience Pentecost. And yeah. since from Pentecost, we have been there since Pentecost for, for this number of years, and we've been expecting tabernacles. In fact, yeah. the seventh, the feast of the seventh one. Now, those seven feasts could be divided into three, like I said Passover, Pentecost, and tabernacles. tabernacles. Now, the apostles, they experienced Passover. They were excited. Oh, glory. And Paul said, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7, Christ, even Christ, which is our Passover, have been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore, therefore celebrate the feast, not with the level of malice and wickedness, but with on the level bread of sincerity. And... Praise God. Say, so, oh, we have celebrated Passover. Fantastic Passover, Passover. Then they saw um, uh, the Holy Ghost come. On the day of Pentecost, when they were, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, like, for example, if you want to do Christmas, you know, Christmas is on the 25th. But by the 15th, you start smelling Christmas. Ah, this Christmas, you start greeting anybody. Merry Christmas, so, Merry Christmas, so. But on the 25th, that's when the day of Christmas fully come. So that was exactly what was going on then. It was Pentecost, and the disciples the, the, the gathered from all over the world, like Pastor has said, you know, and then. Uh, when the day of Pentecost now came, the Holy Ghost came. The real Pentecost, the real reason for Pentecost now came. It came inside us and it is pouring out of us. It's, it's yes. inside us to bring us the nature of Christ, to conform our nature to that of Christ. And pouring out of us to affect others also to experience what they are experiencing. Praise God. Now, so they were excited and they were waiting. They were waiting. What were they waiting for? The feast of the of the seventh month, the third major feast. That's what they were expecting. They were expecting the feast of Tabernacles. They were expecting the feast of Tabernacles, you know. And then uh, it was the reason for that expectation, uh, because it was like it was never going to come. The church, everybody was dying. Uh, if if they had continued, from if it was going to happen, I mean, one step after the other, none of the disciples would have died. The apostles. They will have resurrected to glory. You understand the Passover, Pentecost, you know, because of what Tabernacles means. It means glory. It means resurrection. It means life in the flesh. It means conquest. It means women. You know, and then we didn't see all of that. So they were waiting. Much like Ezekiel, who was waiting, who had been, whose land had been conquered. He was a priest. You know, Ezekiel was a priest. And he understood the promise concerning Israel. So when the Nebuchadnezzar people, when they conquered him, he was, he was, he was grief stricken. Like most of, of Israel, also they were Greek speaking. He said, I was among the captives by the liver of Kepa. And he was just he was just like that. He was he was sober, he was sorrowful. So, that was the same way, also. John was also sorrowful. He was in the say was in the, the Isle of Patmos or the testimony of you know, he was waiting. Not like those guys that were under the feast seal, those that they were waiting also. Lord, holy and true. How long will it be before you avenge us? Upon, uh, against, I mean, uh, uh, for, on those who dwell on the earth. That means give us our resurrected body. That, yeah. John was uh, almost disillusioned. What's going on here? What's going on here? We have done everything. We are expecting the glorification. Then also, Ezekiel was also disturbed. You know what? In Ezekiel, let me see, and the heaven, he saw the heavens open and he saw some creatures there. And so also, John also heard, he saw a door open in heaven. And he had a voice saying, come up hither. And then yes. they were explaining to him the third feasts. The book of Revelation is the book where the third feast is explained to us. And that third feast starts with what? The blowing of trumpet. That was trumpet. why the first voice that John heard, he said, and I had a voice like as of a trumpet saying, come up hither. Because they explained to him how the third feast was going to come. Now, and then we're so sweet, you know, because that's what we're waiting for. Once we begin to celebrate this feast, 
It's not as if we're waiting for it for it to come. It's already available for us. You understand? In our life experiences. But the, the general body of Christ don't know about it. And they don't understand the workings of God in their lives. They don't understand why God should, why somebody uh, should not have money. And then you have to trust God. And then you have uh, opportunity to steal. You refuse to steal. They don't understand that. Because our pastors are not, that is not in the syllabus of our pastors. Our pastors are telling us that once you do, once you, sorry, maybe not, I mean, you know, I'm just generally speaking. You know, I'm not saying every pastor. But you know, generally the body of Christ. You know, once you pay your tithe and you give your offer, you must prosper. But why am I not prospering God? What was going on here? You know, and all of that. Now, we, we begin to talk. We don't get impatient. Somebody gets married and he doesn't yet have a child and then he's, he's, he's pressured, pressured, pressured by in-laws, pressured by mother-in-law, pressured. They begin, to get, they begin to invite you to so many places and you are saying, no, you are standing as a witness with that. Hallelujah. And then eventually God does it. Now, there are so many things that are, that are to be happening around this time in our life because of this thought feast. We were, we, we were going to be explaining by God's grace tomorrow it's a very powerful feast and uh, because of this feast you know when you know the 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 um those guys who who shot the gates of Eden, what are they called cherubim they were they were told to keep to guard the gates for them okay for them yeah the cherubim thank you very much now when john was invited to come and to 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 open the schools, eh? four of them came back again. You are called the living creatures because yes. they were, you know, you see them in Revelation chapter four and five. One was like the eagle, one was like the like man, one was like um, ox, one was like uh, um, lion. Hey. Lion. Praise God. Four of them. They were there were those four also in the gates of Eden. They prevented man from going into what we are going to now. That's why Paul said, the things which angels long to look into, the things which the saints of old long to look they, they, the door was shut to them. But in, in, in Christianity or in the life of Christ, the door is open to us. But how is the door open to us? Those guys began to say, come and see. And I heard another voice from among the the living creature said, come and see. And I saw a, um, a horse rider with his horse. Those horse riders are passing through the landscape of our lives. Hallelujah. And, and I saw, and I heard another voice again from among the living creatures say, come and see. And another one went, another horse rider. Then, I don't know, come and see. And another one went. And then, come and see. And another one went. That was there. Now, after those four, I said, come and see. No, but there was no come and see anymore. The gate was open. The answer was to fill. Man had died to all that was a damning and was just waiting for the resurrection. That was, it was, it opened us the fifth seal. Where the, where the Lord told them, say, we are, we have fulfilled it. Just wait a bit. Until the number of thy brethren, which shall be killed as you are, are fulfilled. Hallelujah. Come and see. But I'll close on this. On the third on the, the third one, the third one that went, that he held a he held um, a, a, a gauge, a balance. You know, go to buy meat in the market. What they you know, um, they will put it on your a scale. Thank you very much, Pastor Peter. A scale. So that scale, you know, is not shaped like our own. But I'm sure you have seen those kind of Asian yes. type of scales. And then, yeah, the Bible, so so he held a scale and. There was a proclamation ahead of him saying, um, a measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of uh, um, um, barley for a penny. Yes. A measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny, pot not the oil and the wine. The wine. Let's rewind a little. We finish tomorrow. Praise God. We finish this tomorrow. Now, now, you know, each of the feasts were harvests. There was a harvest of barley. There were three of them. Praise God. There were three of them. That's why he says, 
a measure of value, three measures of rather of value for a penny. Three of them. Okay? And you see a measure of wheat for a penny. In Pentecost, in Pentecost, they used to harvest wheat. So he says, ah, so it's available. Uh, it's available but expensive. So you buy it with your life. You buy three measures of value for a penny with your life. You buy we are seeing all of that more. And then he now says, hot not oil and water. The real language that does not mean hot, it means touch not. I mean, it is inaccessible. It is unavailable as at that. When Passover is working in your life, not yet working in your life, Pentecost has not yet worked in your life, the oil and the wine becomes inaccessible. I'll be yes. talking about that much tomorrow. Yes. Thank, Thank you, sir. Uh, it's so interesting. You know, it's so interesting. You know, so we're going to be talking about how the oil and the wine is made available. You know, the third feast is the, the harvest of oil and wine. Yeah. Grapes and the vine and the oil olive. Grapes and the oil olive are harvested in the third feast. So we're going to be seeing how that would happen. How we can have access to the oil and the wine. Please, do we have any questions so that we can go? We have we have done nine ten today. Um, we, have, we have gone ahead. I mean, over the time tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Please, can we can we? Do you have any questions? Or should I? I, I wish this was a class. I will have asked questions. I remember my class in those days, Christ College. Anybody from Christ College in those days here? Okay. Uh, that. Are you there? Cafe is in England. Uh, Cafe. Oil and wine. Any difference? Oil and wine. Any difference? Okay. It does refer to the Feast of Tabernacles. The oil yes. and wine refer to Tabernacles. And in the Feast of Tabernacles, we will talk about what it means tomorrow. I mentioned it a little bit in the first uh, this week. So, on the first class, we'll talk about it tomorrow by just this. Okay, that face not there. Are you there? Or maybe you need to unmute. Okay, then uh, the Kinet Jennifer uh, in, our, in our Bible school before. Okay, all right. And apart from that, I know no other. Hallelujah. Um, so if you can ask questions, or uh, maybe we'll write our questions for tomorrow. This is very important for us to know. Thank you very much, everyone that have been a part of it. Pastor, thank you very much. You know, I'm also I'm always excited when I see men of God in this type of meetings because they know. Men of God know. Hallelujah. So when a man of God comes to this type of meeting and they are listening and they are adding and they are reviewing and they are just supporting. <laughs> so Pastor Peter said, How did we go wrong? Okay, let me let me click on it. How did we go wrong with ignoring the Lord's feast? Oh wow, because you said it was a religion. <laughs> just go to church, you we get married, we have good jobs, uh, then we get married, we have children, then we die, our children continue, then their own children go to the same process, then their children replace them, then their children also go, then their children replace them, then their children, and then world without end. That's what we thought the faith was about. But I know at the time when the war, the old thing is about to finish, when all of us have slept. There will be a sound. Behold, the bride will come. And that is why God is enabling all of us slept. You, everybody slept. Everybody slept. Everybody. You know, all of us were wicked. Everybody slept. Yes. Yes. The entire church slept. So it's our, uh, it's our, it is our responsibility to awaken. If we have heard the voice, then we can awaken others. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, everyone. Pastor Success, thank you very much. I appreciate you for coming tonight. And my wife, thank you. That's that. Thank you. Pastor Samson, the church of Creative Mighty. Uh, uh, Pastor Sama Abadi, thank you very much. The mercy, thank you. Oh, and the admin of the Lord, Dio, thank you very much for being around. Olado uh, Kondu Dio. The a pastor, I believe, yeah, because he has been a many of them for, for very many years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Joshua, thank you. Uh, Dr. Edero Bukata, thank you. Um, 
Tene from England, Sister Messi also attended from England. Ah, Pastor Ferreira also attended from England. Thank you very much, God bless you, sir. Um, Sister Latifa also happened to be in London. Won't I come and start a church in London too? Eh? There are many people attending from uh, London and everywhere, <laughs> and places around England. <laughs> uh, Rabelo Baturi, thank you very much for being here. Oh, Daffy is also from London. Oh, wow. I need to start it. The Lord is speaking so. Daffy is here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, Sister Sarah Bassis is from, uh, uh, participating from Scotland. Can you see now? What can be better than this? Hallelujah. Thank you very much for being here. By Sir Justin Shadido, an elder in the body of Christ and one of the sons of God are doing mighty things in our days. Thank you very much for being here. My very, very lovely friend, Azuka Du, she's here. God bless you. Thanks for being a part of it. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, Dickiness Jennifer is with me here. My very, very own daughter in the faith. God bless you. Um, Pastor Peter Odion, okay, he's the only person from Canada here. So we will not be able to start a church in Canada yet until we have many more people. <laughs> Pastor Peter, thank you very much. And your lovely wife. I'm sure maybe she's there. If she's not there, please do that for me. Zoom user, I don't know who Zoom user is, please identify. Sister Patty, uh, Sister Patty the daughter of the admin of the Lord, God bless you. Thanks for being here. She's joining us from, um, from um, Lagos tonight. Oh, okay. Maybe I can begin to consider the US to start something there because my wife's, uh, my friend's wife is here, um, Mrs. Adeoju Akibade. Thank you very much. God bless you so much Ma, for being around. And um, okay, I think uh, I'm thinking maybe that would be for everybody. Uh, Sister Latifa, I've mentioned Sister Latifa. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, can Zoom user identify? Thank you all very much. I appreciate you. Thank you, Sister Latifa. Take the. Thank you very much. God bless you. And um, okay, um, um, Mrs. Aguilar is attending from the US. Thank you very much for being here. Um, okay, maybe maybe this is telling me that I should leave Nigeria very soon because there are even more people from outside this country that attend this meeting than Nigeria. They go to our residence here. Thank you very much, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you very much. Sir. God bless you, sir. Um, so tomorrow we we end the meeting. God bless you so 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 much. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yeah, so from London, yeah, so Latifa. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, everyone. My wife is also here, because I've mentioned her. Thank you, uh, for being uh, supportive of the work, being one with the work also. Yeah, so tomorrow, by God's grace, we're going to finish. I and Pastor Chudi will be ministering tomorrow, and it was so powerful tonight, and it's going to be much more powerful tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Can we just pray? Lord, give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The knowledge will help us to know your will, your word more and more in Jesus' name. Pastor Binga, sorry, I didn't mention your name. I don't know how I missed it. Yeah, Pastor Binga, thank you for being here from uh, uh, his import accord presently. Uh, Pastor Samson, I don't know what I mentioned it. Thank you very much for being around. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a lovely night for 8 o'clock Nigerian time tomorrow. We meet again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you, sir. I appreciate you. Enjoyed every part of the world. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, Telegram, thank you for being around. Sorry. Telegram people, Sister Joy, Aruna. Thank you. I, I, I saw it six or so. so people there. The other time. Thank you. Pastor Itokwelala. Thank you. And they, all those who joined us there on Telegram. Thank you very much. God bless you. Have a lovely night, everyone. Bye bye. Oh, Pastor Niyo Yewusi from Canada. Yes, I oh I saw you, but I didn't see you again. Thank you very much. I see you. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of the meeting. Yeah, I just did it. Uh, I just remember that. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye.